my advocate team is aligned with um, white paper six that was enacted in 2001 and then also the screening identification assessment and support which we call SIAS in South Africa which was enacted in um, 2014 and then the sustainable development goal number four which speaks to uh, quality education so um, I have established uh, a foundation which is the Sisi Butime Foundation and the notion of my foundation is uh, equal and quality education for all. By that, uh, that is my notion of uh, inclusive education. So just to give a brief, back, a brief sorry, background about the framework uh, mentioned about, which is the policies that I referred to, these two policies are in place in, in the South African education system. And the white paper six of 2001, it outlines how the education and the training system must transform itself. This is very critical. It must transform itself to contribute to establishing a caring and humane society. So which means it's inclusive. So, and how it must change to accommodate the full range of learning needs to be put in place. And then the second policy, which I refer to, is the CS of 2014, which scaffold the white paper six. And you know that the purpose of this policy is to provide a framework for the standardization of the procedures uh, when we identify and uh, assess and provide programs for all learners who require additional needs. Uh, sorry, additional sorry, ad additional support to improve participation and inclusion in school. So basically these policies, what they want to do is we need to uh, transform the education system to make sure that each child, they receive quality and each qual um, education. And then there's full participation, you know, full participation of everyone. And lastly, I refer to the SDG, which uh, the Sustainable Development Goal, which is a plan of action for people, planet, and prosperity. We all know the Agenda 2030. So the SDG 4 is the, educa um, is the education goal. The objective is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. So also this is inclusive. And then also in that they have target 4.A, which is to build and upgrade uh, education facilities that are child disability and gender sensitive and provide safe, first, non-violent, inclusive and effective learning. Now, it is saddening that these policies are put in place in different countries across Africa. The policies that speaks to inclusion for all, yet the children that are living with a disability continue to be failed and uh, marginalized. For instance, in South Africa, and I know for sure in, in, in Africa, uh, you know, you have kids that come from downtrodden areas that they have never been to school. They don't know, they've never experienced uh, a classroom setting because they live in areas that are, you know, inaccessible. You know, there's no transport. There are no schools that caters for their additional needs. So now, according to as we according to the Disability Africa Changing Children's Life, which was written in 2017, an overwhelming majority of children in Africa are being deprived of access to education. And furthermore, only about 2% of these children living with a disability are attending schools. And I can, you know, I, I can attest to that in, 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 in South Africa, uh, where I am based. I, I've, I've worked, you know, in, in, in cities, I've worked in remote rural areas, and I've seen how these kids that are living with a disability, they are marginalized, they you know, they don't have any access to, you know, formal education. Uh, quite clearly, this, this isn't good enough, and it has to change. So I share the same sentiment that this has to change given the policies that are put in place to promote inclusive education. 
and you know, uh, over and above the adoption of the United Nations Convention on Disability Rights by the African government. Uh, you know, the plausible solution uh, in the realization of inclusive education is the understanding that education of the children goes beyond four walls of the classroom. By this, I mean that, uh, you know, it is, it is our responsibility, uh, you know, as, as a community that the children are getting the education that they require, that the education that they need. We all have an obligation. We all have a responsibility to ensure that children they are educated and they develop to their maximum potential. And thus we need to involve stakeholders to capacitate the education system across Africa. For instance, I am working in a full service school and I have, like I've said, I've established a network with different stakeholders like the NGOs, the profession, the companies, etc to help our institution to be inclusive so in conclusion every child is born with the ability and the honors the responsibility lies with us as parents as teachers and community to invest in the child and lead their talents and develop them to their maximum potential I, I honestly think that your advocacy is interesting coming on the heels of HMI's conversation about the role of fathers in the lives of children. And I like the fact that you put there that you know, it's not just about education with the four walls of a classroom and that the whole community needs to invest in the education of that child. Inclusivity is a buzzword that is going on now. And I do believe that strongly the government, society, everyone has to play their own part. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure that HMI and Tolu have quite a lot to say on this very lengthy discussion that you have brought up. Yes. For me, it actually hits home, yeah? And why is because I have a son that lives with special needs. And so I literally walk this path every day. Now, the gap between the policies, the, SD, the SD, SDGs, yes, and the reality in Nigeria is phenomenal. As in, there is absolutely no correlation between what we want to achieve in the Vision 2020 and what the reality is. In Nigeria, first of all, the governments are completely oblivious of what is going on. They have a major problem with education because more than 85% of Nigerians or Nigerian children are educated in, in private schools, which of course has own issues. Now, not only that, the children now living with special needs are now relegated to the back. What, but we're, we're fortunate in Lagos. We're fortunate. Why do I say we're fortunate? We're fortunate because we are a cosmopolitan state. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of people from the diaspora that have come to Lagos. And so they have this up-to-date knowledge of yeah. what inclusive education is all about. So they set up these beautiful, contemporary, up-to-date, modern schools for people living with disability. That's oh. true. Very true. But the caveat is that you will use your father's earnings, <laughs> your, mother's, your mother's eyes, <laughs> and your grandparents' and your wiggle <laughs> if want to pay for the school fees. That's true. Though. You know, so my last child with special needs, his school fees is like, the sum of the oh. one in secondary school and the other one in primary school together, and it's only five. Wow. So mm. it's so expensive. So the government needs to, first of all, make it mandatory. See, let's make this thing simple. Government does not have the willpower or everything to do. Just make it mandatory. Every private school in Nigeria, if you want to operate in Nigeria as a private school, you must have a minimum number of special needs children that you admit. That's also yeah. a very good idea. Yeah. That's an that idea that I have never really thought about, actually, because on this issue. But you know, you, I, because I have worked in special needs units before. But then, you know the one that... So I will talk about a lot of attention that's been put around children with special needs, autism, and the rest. But one area that I also observe from since this conversation is we live with physical disabilities. It's, a, it's, a, it's like we don't even talk yeah, about it at exist. all. Yeah. What do you mean, physical so, disability? You know, the, it, it, I mean, like, you know... Like that's not the issue like here. The, 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 when we talk about education and disability, physical disability is not the issue. Physical disability, you want to move from one place to another. If you get to the classroom, you can learn. Yes. When we talk about 
disability and education. We talk about children with autism, children with um, Down syndrome, children that have intellectual disability. They cannot, they, they can sit in class with other children. It's called inclusion. But the way you teach the regular children is not the way you teach them. So don't mix the physical disability children and the intellectual disability children together. Yeah, I understand. No, no, so from our layman's understanding of inclusion, now, now that you have shed more academic light to it, mm -hmm. but you know, from the layman's perspective yeah. and from my understanding, and I mean, even thinking about it, I'm not sure that throughout my entire educational system, I actually had a classmate who was actually even physically yeah, so disabled. Exactly. So even can you imagine? So, exactly. so now you can see the gap. I agree with you. So where are they? So the thing is, if we actually start from, let's say, something as basic as being physically handicapped, if someone that is physically handicapped cannot even get into there's class, no ramps. then you know there are no ramps. Is that there no? No, no, they now have intellectual disability. No, yeah, so, so I mean, intellectual disability is like the second layer of it. True. So I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, I can count in my years of it, in twenty years of education, how many people I saw in my class are physically handicapped. But there are people that are my age that are physically handicapped. In my sister, that is now a doctor, a practicing like doctor, yeah. said that when she became a doctor in the UK, she had a flashback. When she was five years old in Pamri One or going to Pamri One, that her seatmates beside her could not write one to ten. She was writing one to hundred. Mm -hmm. And the teacher was there with the cane, beating mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. You are so empty. Mm -hmm. And it was she said she, it came, the realization came to her that no, he wasn't slow. No, he wasn't empty. The guy has an intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Sizi. We really appreciate this topic. Up next, Tolu advocates for the restructure of the Nigerian education system.